If you remember just one thing when you vote in next year's election for governor, please remember what you learned from this video. In August 2007, something historic, long overdue, and incredibly useful sailed into our lives. After a lifetime of waiting, and after nearly 50 years since becoming a state, Hawaii finally had its very own inter-island ferry service, the Hawaii Super Ferry. Right away, the people of Hawaii overwhelmingly knew this was a great opportunity. Local families, local businesses, commuters, and visitors alike had hoped for a service like this for decades, one which provides new options for inter-island travel, inter-island trade, inter-island tourism, and jobs with the ferry company itself. There was so much to look forward to, since before you know it, once the service fully ramped up, all the major islands of Hawaii would be linked by ferry. Without question, this unprecedented connection of the islands through a daily schedule of rapid ocean transportation would usher in a new era in Hawaii's history. Then, suddenly, in the blink of an eye, the super ferry was gone, and it was clear that the ferry service would never be coming back. With its operations shut down and the company and its vessels leaving Hawaii for good, Hawaii Super Ferry was run out of business and even out of town, causing major negative repercussions for island residents, businesses, tourists, and Super Ferry employees, crushing the hopes and dreams of so many who understood how vital the inter-island ferry system would be to Hawaii's future and how critical it would be to our island economy right away. The Super Ferry CEO calls it the worst day of his life, having to tell 249 employees they're losing their jobs. It was a lot of hugging today, a lot of tears. And... 249 employees have been furloughed. The Super Ferry says it just could no longer shoulder the financial cost with the ship unable to operate. The 249 made up about 80% of the workforce. The positions varied from senior management to those who checked passengers in, workers on the pier who made sure vehicles pulled in safely, and employees who served passengers right on the ship. There is um, all, all facets of uh, our customer service people, uh, people who left other positions in town, people who've grown up here, um, people who went away to the mainland to take jobs as in the maritime industry, and when they had this opportunity to come home, they came home. Businesses that have depended on the super ferry are scrambling for alternate modes of transportation to Maui tonight now that the Alakai has completed what could be its last voyage ever in Hawaiian waters. KITV's Jody Leong joins us live now with that story. Jody. Paula, many local companies and farmers have depended on the super ferry for inner island service for the past year. Now many of them are turning back to air cargo companies to deliver their products to the Valley Isle. Love's Bakery is among the businesses looking to Aloha Air Cargo for help. Love's is using Aloha to get its bread products to Maui in the immediate future. Love says the loss of the super ferry will mean a substantial loss for the company. It expects an increase in its distribution expenses to... Super Ferry employees got the news on board the vessel itself. A bunch of us uh, got laid off on our jobs. And it's, it's, it's difficult. I think all our families are going to feel it. I feel it's very sad for a lot of workers in Hawaii, for, for the state, you know, for our Super Ferry. Employees got the call for a mandatory meeting last night, but when they showed up today, nobody knew what they were about to hear. No idea. None. But now we know exactly what those employees were told. It was bad news. The ferry operation would be shut down and locked up, never to be reopened. The Supreme Court had clearly ruled that the super ferry could not legally operate in Hawaiian waters because the required environmental review had not been conducted first. And then it also ruled that the Lingle Iona administration's last minute attempt to persuade the legislature to allow the super ferry to break the law was unconstitutional. The Supreme Court said that the specially adopted law known as Act II was flat out illegal because government is not allowed to adopt narrowly written special laws that single out just one company. This ruling 
was the final nail in the coffin of the ferry service. With that final piece of bad news, the now bankrupted company would have to sell off its assets, take its ships elsewhere, leaving our islands unable to ever again benefit from the company's ferry services. Just when the super ferry was only beginning to create amazing opportunities for families, businesses, commuters, and visitors alike, a major opportunity was gone. Hawaii missed the boat. Such horrible news to relive, but we must learn who it was that provided the super ferry company with such bad advice that practically guaranteed disaster would follow. Who was it? that exempted the super ferry from the legally required environmental review in the first place, since that's what sunk the ferry service. Who caused the death of the super ferry? Just who is to blame? The answer is simple, and everyone from the state auditor to the state Supreme Court to the state legislature knows the answer. In a bombshell news story, it was revealed that the Lingle Iona administration never told officials at the super ferry that an environmental review would be required. Instead, it appears that the administration was trying to circumvent the law. Chairs Taniguchi, English and Minoran members. The super ferry boss told senators his company didn't do an environmental assessment because the state never asked for one. There was never a communication from them to us that an environmental assessment was needed. So no one from the administration said to anyone from Hawaii Super Ferry that it was likely or it might be probable that an environmental assessment would be required? I can't recall those discussions, okay. Senator. According to the Supreme Court's first decision concerning the Super Ferry, once the Lingaliona administration invested $40 million in taxpayer money for ferry-related harbor improvements and barges for the ferry to offload vehicles, this alone should have triggered an environmental review. The Supreme Court ruled, quote, stated simply, the record in this case shows that the Lingaliona administration did not consider whether its facilitation of the Hawaii Superferry project will probably have minimal or no significant impacts, both primary and secondary, on the environment, end quote. Reaching precisely the same conclusion in December 2007, the respected longtime state auditor, Marion Higa, slammed the Lingaliona administration over its mishandling of the super ferry, saying Linda and Duke's administration, quote, ignored its own long-standing policy and the state's environmental laws, end quote. In addition, Higa found that Bob Awana, the disgraced Lingal advisor and Lingaliona's campaign manager, and scandal-plagued chief of staff to Linda Lingle, who later resigned due to his links to sex and corruption scandals, was directly involved in the administration's decision-making about the illegal exemption, along with Barry Fukunaga, the man from the administration's Department of Transportation, who would later replace Awana to this very day as chief of staff to the governor. For the record, the administration has said that the illegal and fatal exemption to the super ferry was made by Barry Fukunaga, who was then deputy director for harbors, but was later promoted to state transportation director and now currently serves as Governor Lingle's chief of staff. It sure seems like rotten politics as usual from the administration that promised a, quote, new beginning.